it is Monday, September 27th. It's 5.45 p.m. Jim and I got back from vacation on Saturday. Um, so it's been two days, parts of three days. And while we were gone, I, I saw nothing that they'd done, except I had left some fruit over there and two plums were gone. But I'm not sure if they did that or if somebody, something else ate them. But I just got up from a nap because I was out here working earlier and I was so tired so I laid down and I came out hopeful that they had done something and sure enough they did. First thing I saw was this in my chair and actually I had been sitting in my chair today in this chair. And as you can see, it's right dead middle. So I know they brought it. And also Jim said it's a sunburst locust from the front of the house. Okay, this sunburst locust comes from that tree right there. In the teardrop. Okay, and that's not all they did. They were busy. Okay. This was here, and then over here on the railing, I had bought them this and put it over here. It was right here. Well, they've moved it to here. So, so far, leaf gift, and they moved this. Now, the next thing is, when I was out here working, I was using these gloves. We noticed one right there. I don't know how it got there. I thought maybe the wind blew it, which is possible because it's really windy today. But then we found the other glove. <laughs> Wait till you see where it is, and it wouldn't have been put out here by me or Jim. It's here. Look how, <laughs> look how it's laid in there. Just like if I was wearing it. And you know what else? The coloring, the color is the same. And whenever I came home from vacation, this had grown tons and tons. And I was so excited. And I was telling Jim all about it and stuff. So I made a big deal out of it when I got home. And, and then, now that's put in there. I have a feeling you might have been watching me today. Okay, then there's something else. Okay, when I was working today, I brought several tools out here, and I laid them ones I thought I would use. Propped those ones there, and I had a pair of uh, plant shears. When I was back here, where I found the glove, and we were coming back in the garage. Look, we're there. They're laying on Jim's tractor. Oh my God, I just made the connection. It's the colors, look. John Deere green. <laughs> Yellow and green. But they moved them from there, because I didn't use them, so they moved them from the railing to here. And it appears that they have put a leaf here, too. How awesome is that? And it's super crazy that they've got, like, the colors right where the color ends. And that's silver. <coughs> and the seat's got that duct tape on it, so that is awesome. So I'm wondering, that leaf must be for Jim. Okay, so this is completely awesome. I think I'm going to lay this here until I get back. And then I'm going to take everything outside and talk to him. But i got to tell you more stuff. I believe that's everything. Boy, were they busy while I took a nap. So if there's anything else, I will let you know. And there's my cute little Bitsy. Oh, she was. 
like, yeah, mom, yeah, I know you're going to film me, so quit being cute now. Okay, I was like, I walked over there to talk to him and I made my way back this way and I noticed something else. I told you there were two plums gone. Okay, there were two bananas. When we got back, they were still there. They were rotten. I threw them over there. The two plums were gone and I saw no signs of them anywhere. I looked down here really good for any uh, signs of them seeds or anything nothing I know for sure there's nothing up here and now there is this is one of the plum seeds so apparently they brought that back and left it for me and I'm wondering if they're saying thanks for it or what but you are welcome you like the plums guys huh yeah I'll have to put them something else out there so I'm going to collect that too. I'm going to put it in something, probably paper, to keep. I better keep going because who knows what I might find. <laughs> Heck, I almost forgot to tell you this. This happened on the front porch. Okay, after I sat on the front or the back porch, I came to the front to sit for a little while. You know, when I first got up, I didn't look out here. So I sat there and I took my shoes off. Well, there's one of them. Okay, I didn't move them. There's the other one. Stuck under the rail. So... Apparently they did that. See it sticking out there. That's the shoes I was gardening with. And also, this marble's moved again. Now, stay back, Ames. It was here. And I came out here, I think it was yesterday and it was moved out of the line. And I thought, that's odd, I wonder if they did that. But I didn't know if Bitsy bumped it or something. So I just put it back. Well, it's happened again. So I'm thinking they're saying that that doesn't belong in this lineup with blue and white. <laughs> so we'll see if it happens again. I think I'll leave it for now and then I might take that one out and put another blue in there maybe I don't know but I still have to look around see if I've missed anything else so on the front porch the shoe was moved and that marble was moved okay this is September 28th 7:54 a.m. and last night I left two plums out here for the Bigfoots and I told them that they were here for them. I put them back here and there's they left the seeds just like they did yesterday when they brought it back. They left them right here. <laughs> that's that's really funny. They must really like those plums. I'm pretty sure it's, it's I mean, it's got to be them because of them bringing back that seed, so. Because that wasn't here, and then it, then they returned it. So. I don't see any footprints, but it stormed real hard. So if there was any, it might have. And washed them away. I'm also wondering if this is their way of saying thank you and could I have some more please? So <laughs> I was sitting in on the couch and I heard something loud like a thump and hit the house fall something really loud noise. 
So I get up and check everything. The cats were not doing anything. And I could not find a doggone thing out of place. I didn't see anything. So I went back and sat down and I thought, maybe they're wanting their plums. So I took two plums out, put it on the bench. Went back in and I sat down for a while. And we started hearing the owl sound. A lot. And I came out and talked to them. And they were like, it was like they were doing it back at me. And it's about this one time I raised my hand to wave at them down there. And it, immediately they did the owl. It was really cool. And I thought I had the recorder turned on, but I didn't. It was so cool. But anyways, I thought I'd at least tell you about it. Okay, today is Tuesday, October 5th. It's 12.33 p.m. Amy says hi. I think she wants to come out. <laughs> I'll let her out. Hang on. Come on, Ames. Come on. There she goes. Okay, um, I wanted to explain some things because I'm going over audio right now that I took on... See, it was the 28th and 29th of September. Now, <clears throat> in the past, I have wondered if the Bigfoots have coyotes for pets. And if you remember, a ways back, I'll see if I can find the pictures, but there were what looked like juvenile Bigfoot tracks walking right up through there um, with right beside it coyote tracks now I came out here and I was cleaning snow off the railing and I started around here to check that stick and everything And on my way, I noticed these tracks in the snow. Now, see, like this one looks actually like a footprint with the toe and everything. And they go pretty much in a straight line, clear up to there. However, there's another set. Here, and these ones look smaller, like they could have been made by a cat or a coyote or something. So, I don't know if these are just melt out or what, or maybe even it was a deer. I don't know, but I found it strange. I took pictures when I first found them, but. Kind of funny that it's leading right up here to this stick in the ground, <clears throat> which definitely is stuck in the ground. It is in there solid, and I'm not going to pull it out because I don't like to mess with their handiwork. Oh my god. Holy crap. We have seen many, many times coyotes like one coyote, a lone coyote, around our yard, in our yard. One time we saw it going right down through there. And a lot of times when I'm listening to audio, I will hear a lone coyote calling. 
and then you don't hear anything else. Well, that happened on the audio that I've been listening to. Now what sucks is this file that I was listening to, 0637, I thought I was deleting an empty file and I deleted this file that has all this on it. So all I can do is recap what I heard and tell you what, what was going on. Okay, it was 7.33 p.m. is when it when I started when the file starts. So it was about almost 8 o'clock when this started. And that's about when it gets dark now. What I heard was a distant owl, that fake uh, mimic, the owl mimic call. I heard it off in the distance. Okay, and it went from um, timestamp 2251 up to 2504. So that was about two, between two and three minutes. And then all of a sudden it got a lot closer. And For a minute, it was really close, and it, it did it one, two, three times. Then it started getting further, a little bit further away. Now, we were inside at this time, 20 minutes after that, and we both smelled a skunky smell outside. Um, approximately an hour later, on the audio I start to hear a lone coyote calling and I actually heard it at the time because we were awake and the doors were open I heard it I commented on the video that that was down at the dump area so right down it was coming from right down in that area right down there okay Definitely a coyote down there. Now, that coyote called for four and a half minutes. Um, let's see. Okay, then apparently it did it again about... Um, half an hour later, is that what that one forty? Yeah, yeah, about about half hour later, it called again. Okay, now that brings us to the audio that I am listening to now that I didn't erase, <laughs> and it was two nineteen a.m. Okay, there was um, two files skipped between here where nothing happened, so. For a little over four hours in between that coyote call and this. All of a sudden I'm listening and I jump out of my skin because it sounds like there's a coyote right here in the front yard. And I had the recorder right here on the table. So it, it calls for, um, oh minute it calls for over a minute and then it just quit just, just as quickly as it started it quit so it's like okay the owl progressed f far away and then it got closer then that quit and then the coyote was calling, and it got closer and closer and closer. So what I'm imagining in my head is maybe a juvenile Bigfoot with a pet coyote making its way this way. And I don't know that it was the one making the owl mimics. That could have been an adult communicating with the little Bigfoot. I don't know. But that same night, and we've just... We, we've already seen this in my diary, so I'm just recapping. This 
the same night that the coyote made its way to our yard, this happened. So the next morning at 7.59 a.m. I get up and I find the two plum pits on the bench. There were two plums out, the plums got eaten. And they left the pits. So I'm wondering if while the Bigfoot, the little Bigfoot was up here doing its thing, the coyote was in the yard with it, and then, you know, that's really, really intriguing and fascinating to me, and I, it just adds to my theory that they have a pet coyote sometimes.
That's awesome. She wanted back in. If he was here. She, I heard it even there. I don't know why Amy went in. Scared the cow. It didn't seem to be. I mean, she was down there by the pump and stuff, and the cows were all up here. And felt like it was bothering her. Mm, it is the trip. Okay, the plums are gone and the pits are here. But they didn't take them until I took away the pits that were here from the ones that they had previously eaten. So, Bitsy! <laughs> Good grief! So anyways, it just struck me last night that maybe that's why they were taking them because I had never taken away the pits that they left. And that might be like, Bitsy for crying out loud, that might be um, why they didn't take them because maybe it's sort of like how they trade or something. So, I mean, that might not be it, but I don't know, either way, but anyhow, that's what I was thinking and there's the pits, so. I was also thinking that if it had been a raccoon coming along or a possum or something eating these plums, well, f first of all, the pit wouldn't have disappeared in and come back. And then they keep just leaving the pits on the bench. Like, I'm pretty sure that a raccoon would knock them off. They'd be on the ground. And then the other thing is the days that went by where the plums sat here and, and they didn't eat them, wouldn't a raccoon or a different animal have come back the very next night to get food? So, just going to throw that in.
came out here last night at about one o'clock in the morning when I before I went to bed, and I saw that one of the apples, the one that was over here, that had the little sections out of it, and the little chunk or whatever you want to call it, was gone. I don't see it anywhere, so it's like gone, gone. So I think they took it. Not 100% sure of that, but pretty close. Because I don't know what else would take one apple and leave the other one, not even knock it off or anything. So, that's all I've seen so far. Okay, this morning the apple that was here yesterday that was left is gone. And I checked it last night between 9 p.m. and 12 a.m. And it was gone at 12, still here at 9. So I believe they took it between 9 and 12. It's Wednesday, October 6th, 9.31 a.m. Okay, so the Bigfoots have been not up doing anything around the house for several days, which I was getting a little concerned, missing them really bad, and been checking out here all the time, nothing, nothing, nothing. So, they really outdid themselves this time, folks. <laughs> uh, when I saw all this, I said, oh my God. But they brought a gift and <laughs> that's it right there when I first saw it I thought because Jim's foot moves on here see and it was like this for a while and I just the other day put it back up like this and I thought part of his foot fell off <laughs> but no that is a little doll leg and in fact, they put it near this doll, which would be about the right size and shape and everything for one of these dolls. But it also reminds me of this. So where they put it is just spot on. Yeah, they've outdone themselves on the whole association, similar thing, placement. I mean, wow. And I don't know where they've been, but that is crazy that they found that. I'll tell you what's really crazy is to think, for me to think, that when they're off and away somewhere, that they think about this stuff, they think about us, they think about, I mean, did they just find this and then thought, oh, hey you know, similar to their stuff. Or did they purposely go out looking for that? I don't know. I would say they just found it. That's my uh, guess. But I am just blown away on this one. Um, I already took pictures, so I guess I can pick it up. Oh my goodness. Look at that, it's real close. A little bit smaller. Wow. That's nuts. Well, their absence was well uh, worth it, I guess. <laughs> they really, really did it this time. All right, I guess that's all I have to say about that. If there's anything else, I'll let you know. I'm just going to show you this because it's almost time for everything to start dying. And these are so pretty. I'm so glad they started blooming again because they had, it for a little while, they were like dormant or having a problem. And I'm just 
so excited that they're blooming again. This is a new addition, and it's so pretty. There's just so many things out here that I love. Mostly my Bigfoots, but I also love my flowers. I can't believe that that started blooming again. And then, of all the crazy things, I thought this was done for the year. And I just, there's like, oh my goodness, there's, there's more coming on over there. Yeah, there. What? That's pretty awesome. Okay. I guess I'm done now. <laughs> I was just thinking too about this. And, you know, sometimes they'll put something nearer to something else for, to show that they're matching it to it. But this time they put it between my doll and Jim's doll because it's more similar in size and shape and everything to my doll, but it kind of, because Jim's doll, the legs haven't been shown before just the past few months because I cleaned him up and I took his boots off and I just left, I've got new pants for him, like swimming shorts, so I just left him like he was swimming, going swimming. So his sectioned movable legs have been <laughs> on display for the last few months, so they put it in between the two. And Something that's also really, really awesome is that they are showing me that they know that those are similar. You know what I'm saying? Like, they're showing me that they understand that. One of the most memorable times that they, this probably tops the leg. But when they brought me a whole doll that looked almost exactly like my doll, and they put it right beside it, this is an example of what I'm talking about. And they were so excited about this that we were inside and we heard rocks being thrown or something, and I went outside and I found the rocks on the porch. There was like I don't know, between three and five. They were so excited that they were trying to get me to come out to find it. And that blew my mind completely. But um, there was another time that they kind of blew my mind. There, They brought something that wasn't from a doll, but looked like a person. I'll see if I can find that real quick. Yeah, one time they brought this plumber's tool and put it beside or with the dolls that were me and these used to be what represented the Bigfoots and it like almost immediately struck me that that looked like a person and they put it with the people of course there were some other times that they brought they brought a little Joker doll and they sat it beside Jim's doll. And they brought a policeman. They put it where Jim's doll was, I think. So there's been several times that they did things like this, but I don't know. It's just so interesting. Here's the policeman doll that they brought. And they laid it beside the people. I actually think that was Jim's spot, and I can't remember if they knocked him off and put this one there. <laughs> but I don't see Jim's doll, so I'm thinking they may have. 
yep, the picture that I have on my phone right before that one is Jim's doll sitting on the ground. <laughs> Same day. So they moved it and put this in his place. And then this is the Joker doll that I was telling you about. And they sat it up right beside Jim's doll. Like how that just blew my mind. They didn't lay it down or anything. They sat it so it matched Jim's doll sitting there. So that was the other time I was telling you about. The question I have is some of those examples I just showed you, uh, let me see, it was some of the earliest ones was 2017 when they were bringing those dolls and matching them. So, I mean, that's been four years. So, is it the same individual or is it a new younger one like I've been thinking? Because if it is a new younger one, then it's something that apparently more than one of them pays attention to. Those kind of details and matching and showing me that they see the similarities and everything. So... I'm thinking it would be a new one, but I could be wrong. But I have thought that the one that I interacted with the most back then had, like, kind of moved on or doesn't come around as much. So I don't know, because it would have grown quite a bit. But what I think is really interesting is that if it is a new one, it's doing the same sorts of things that the other one did with this matching and their interest in, in it. And when they're off thinking about what I got here and, you know, they remember, they pay attention and they find it fascinating and important enough to keep it in their mind, go off and find items that match what I've got here, which is just insane. <laughs> it's so interesting.